Earlier, I briefly mentioned the comparable interface. We use this interface to compare two objects, like two user objects. Now, what is the benefit of this? Well, a lot of sorting algorithms are based on comparing objects. So with these comparisons, we can determine what object should come first. I've talked about this in detail in my Ultimate Data Structures and Algorithms course, which is the course that I recommend you to watch after finishing the Advanced Java course. Now let's see how we can use the comparable interface for comparing objects. So here on Java documentation, you can see that comparable is a generic interface because here we have a type parameter. And if you scroll down, you can see that this interface has a single method called compareTo, which takes an object. Now the type of this object is T, which is the type parameter for this generic interface. So to be able to compare two user objects, we should implement this interface in our user class. So here in the user class, we type implement comparable of user. Now we have a compilation error because we haven't implemented this interface yet. So we press Alt and Enter and ask IntelliJ to implement the methods of this interface. IntelliJ is telling us that the comparable interface has a single method, which is highlighted, which means we're going to implement this. So, OK. And here's our compareTo method. Now look at the type of parameter of this method. It's user because we passed the user class over here. Now let me show you what happens if you forget to pass this generic type argument. So I'm going to undo the changes and simply type implement comparable without the generic type argument, okay? Now, let's implement the methods. Look at the type of this parameter. It's object. So instead of comparing a user object with another user object, now we are comparing this with an instance of the object class. Earlier, I told you the problems with the object class. We have to do an explicit cast here, and it is possible to get a casting exception at runtime. So this approach is unsafe, and that's why we should always specify the generic type argument. So here we pass the user class as the generic type argument. Now, here's the logic we should implement here. If the current user object is less than this other user object, that is this parameter here, then we should return a negative value. It could be negative one, negative two, whatever. It doesn't really matter. If they're equal, then we should return zero. And if the current user object is greater than the other user object, then we should return a positive value. Again, it could be one, two, it doesn't matter. So on what basis are we going to compare these two user objects? In other words, how can we say if a user object is greater than another user object or not? Well, let's assume that we're going to compare users by their points. Later, we'll be able to sort users by their points. We'll look at that in the next section. So let's declare a private field of type integer called points. Now we want to initialize this from the constructor. So let's quickly add a constructor, public user integer points. And here we set this.points equals points. Now back to our compare to method. Here's one way to implement this logic. If points is less than o.points, then we return negative one. If they're equal, then we return zero, and otherwise we return negative one. But there is a better way. We can simply return points minus o dot points. So if this user has more points than the other user, the result of this expression is gonna be a positive number. If they're equal, it's gonna be zero. And if this user has fewer points than the other user, the result of this expression is going to be a negative number. So we don't really need these few lines over here. Okay? Now, also for clarity, I would prefer to rename this argument to other. That's better. So this is how we can implement the comparable interface. Now, back in the main class, let's compare two user objects. So here's one user, new user, with 10 points. And here's another user with 20 points. Now in Java, we cannot write code like this if user one is less than user two. We can only use this operator to compare numbers and characters. So to compare two user objects, we'll have to use our compareTo method. We pass user to here, 
Then we check to see if the result is less than zero. We can print a message like user one is smaller than user two. Else if user one dot compare to user two equals zero, then we can print user one equals user two. Otherwise, we're going to print user one is greater than user two. Let's run the program. So user one is less than user two because it has fewer points.